Hi there, my name is Reverend Don Wagner. I'm the pastor of St. Paul United Church of Christ in Lebanon, Illinois. And in the midst of this COVID-19 journey, I've been trying to take time periodically to just do a little Bible study and reflection and um, just kind of a thought about where we are today. This is one person's faith journey, one person's opinion. So uh, if you're not on the same page, that's okay. That's a part of who we are together. But I hope you find something in this that uh, you can resonate with and maybe pray on and uh, find some strength along the way. So uh, I'm offering you a reading today from where my Bible just happened to open up this morning. Uh, that's my habit. I will just open my Bible and read where I am, wherever God leads me that day. And uh, today, I, my Bible opened up to Psalm 151. Now, for those of you who are Bible experts, you will tell me that, this, that the Bible, the canonized Bible as we have it, only has 150 Psalms. And you would be absolutely correct. But Psalm 151 is, in fact, uh, reflected in the First Testament Apocrypha. It's part of the Septuagint. It dates back to about 3 BCE. Uh, it was, uh, they found fragments of it as a part of the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. So, so we know it's a, an, a, it's an authentic psalm. It's been attributed to David. It's about David's rise uh, and, and appointment as king, his blessing as being king. Um, but we're not sure that it's actually Davidic. That said, uh, it did not find its way into the canonized text. Uh, it's sort of an extra text, and it is in Hebrew, and Hebrew and Syriac, and Greek. Um, so it's an, sort of a novel page uh, for me to come to, because that's not where I spend a lot of time. But I got to reading it today, and I thought, oh, I'll share it with you, and uh, done a few reflections on it. So here's this text today from Psalm 151. A hallelujah of David, Jesse's son. I was the smallest of my brothers, the youngest of my father's son. He made me shepherd of his flock, ruler over their young. My hands made a flute, my fingers a lyre. Let me give glory to the Lord, I thought to myself. The mountains cannot witness to God, the hills cannot proclaim him. But the trees have cherished my words, the flocks my deeds. Who can proclaim, who can announce, who can declare the Lord's deeds? God has seen everything. God has heard everything. God has listened. God sent his prophet to anoint me, Samuel, to make me great. My brothers went out to meet him, handsome in form and appearance, their stature tall, their hair beautiful, but the Lord God did not choose them. Instead, he chose me and took me from following the flock. God anointed me with holy, holy oil. God made me a leader for his people, ruler over the children of his covenant. This is the Hebrew 151, Psalm 151. And uh, that's the word of the Lord. And I share it with you this day. It's something to think about. Um, as I read that this morning and I sat on our porch looking out as the Martins were fluttering about their house and uh, the change in the land and the time of the year, um, our certainty has been uh, shattered. Uh, to say the very least. Uh, COVID-19 has uh, taken whatever was normal and uh, changed it into uh, a thing of constant transformation. And, and it seems hard to get our feet down somewhere where we feel rooted and, and secure and safe for even a moment, because no matter what it is we do, we're having to, to think about, okay, so who is this going to affect? Um, how might it affect me? Am I doing all of the safety precautions? Things we never thought about before when our world was so ordered. And by golly, the church is right there in the midst of that. I'm thinking, you know, here's a text that was sort of extraordinary. Uh, it, it wasn't found in the canon. It wasn't deemed to be a part of that essential text uh, that is so much a part of uh, the Bible as we know it anyway today. And uh, then I got to thinking about the church and, you know, things that we sort of canonize in the church, the way we behave, the way we do mission, the way we do ministry, the way we gather together, uh, the way we greet one another, the way we pray for one another, the way we sing our hymns and what hymns belong in our tradition and what hymns belong in other traditions and what sacraments belong here and what sacraments belong there. And, and everybody's got their little niche in place. And then comes along this COVID-19 thing. And suddenly, 
we're finding ourselves, the church anyway, is finding itself in a place it hasn't been in a long, long time. It's finding itself disoriented. We're looking to our leadership for things that will stabilize us. And the fact of the matter is they're as destabilized as anybody. And I'm not saying they're abnormal. I'm not trying to make fun of anybody. I'm just saying there's nothing that whether we can put our feet down and, and drop a root in right now. And uh, maybe that's not all bad. Maybe that's not all bad. I was a history student in, uh, in my undergraduate degree. And, and uh, uh, when I did my history studies, one of the interesting things about the church is the times that it flourished was when it had the most difficulty. And um, that has remained true even now. Uh, there was a time, and not so long ago, many of you will remember when um, here in the United States, uh, we suffered the attacks of 9-11. And uh, uh, the, suddenly everybody was filled with faith. Everybody was praying. People came to church. Numbers went up. The churches flourished. And, and uh, then all of a sudden it just sort of dropped off. Everything returned back to normal. Uh, you couldn't, uh, up until 9-11, you could go to an airport, you could greet anybody anywhere, you could go down the concourses, everything else. Suddenly everything changed about that too. You can't do that anymore. And uh, now we're, here we are in 2020 and COVID-19 and, and life isn't going to be the way it used to be then. But people are now, from a faith perspective, well, let's pray about this. And, and God bless the country Western community and, and their music. I, um, I have tremendous respect for the artists who are doing all of the work to raise funds, to pull the country together, um, to sing songs of hope and praise, and, and to do it from all their separate places. That is so cool. And maybe that's the thing, one of the things we need to take away from this is that we found ways to be united in our isolation, ways that we never thought we would imagine. Uh, I just uh, set up a Zoom meeting a few minutes ago, and uh, who would have thought that we would be telecommuting in, in the church the way we are? Um, uh, we had a meeting the other day of a group of pastors who, uh, who were thinking about, okay, so what's the church going to look like? What's, what's worship going to be like when we are allowed to get together? And, and one of the pastors said, well, it's going to be easier. We're all going to get together. And I'm going, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I don't think so. I think it's going to be an ease back in. And, and I, I, this is just my opinion. I think God has a lot to reveal yet about this process. And uh, if we just jump back in and everybody's back together, not only would it be uh, the potential for the spread of COVID-19 all over again, and, and uh, uh, just probably the most, one of the most unfaithful things that we could do for as a church, but if we return to just the way we were before COVID-19, the same old, same old, um, the amount of as Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King put it, the, the most segregated time in, the, in America is at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Good to return to that and think that's okay? Well, then we've missed an opportunity to truly be the church. Uh, perhaps in our isolation, we're finding a new way of being unified as the church. And, and, and our mission has uniquely become, how do we get the word of Jesus Christ out in a new time, in a new age? And excitedly, from my, at least from my aspect, I mean, I'm, I'm over 60. I'm one of those, you know, people that, that you have to watch out for. I'm one of the old people, you know. Uh, I, I'm finding this to be a wonderful challenge, not just from a technological standpoint, but how can we be proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ in a new age to a lot of people who had given up on the church, to a lot of people who've been angry at the church. I mean, livid angry with the church and with good reason because the church has abused its power and pastors and priests have re abused their power and authority and and folks have, have uh, turned away and thought, ah, I don't want to have anything to do with that. If, that, that's, if the institution's going to behave that way and uh, forget about the people, well now, God has us being people, all of us being people, and, and we have to listen carefully to what God has got to say. And, and maybe we can pull from the, the lesson of Psalm 151. God has a way of anointing people that nobody else expected. And that story of David's anointing by Samuel, that, that story of being the one who was out in the pasture when everybody else was standing thinking they were the ones that were going to be the next king. Now God's got a different idea. And I think God's got a different idea about life now.
Uh, it's not going to be a return to the same old Easter celebrations that we had every Sunday when we gathered together in the Christian tradition anyway. It's going to be something new. And uh, we may have to ease back into our in-person gatherings, but even our in-person gatherings, my gosh, think about it now. We're going to have to be careful about how we um, sanitize our worship facilities in between services. And if we're going to be limited in the number of people that we have in service, are we going to have multiple services uh, to help uh, uh, to facilitate the number of people that are in worship. Uh, one of my colleagues suggested we sell tickets. Now, there is a good idea. I tell you what, the $1,000 tickets are going to be the back pews, and, and the, the cheap seats are going to be up front, and, and we'll figure it all out from there. I'm teasing, of course. I'm not sure where this is going to go. None of us are sure. But what I want you to think about today is, where, where do you think God is calling the church in its mission and ministry to the world to... Uh, feed the hungry, to give drink to the thirsty, to clothe the naked, to welcome the stranger, to uh, care for the sick, to care for the ones imprisoned, uh, to do that, that, that job of radical hospitality and love that God has called the community of faith to be about since the beginning of time. Where are we today in, in finding a way to do that? Uh, how do we invite people into a new relationship of trust. Not with church, not with the institution, with God. How do we become a witness to what God is doing in this age? And um, I, I, I look to the example that's being set by the medical community right now uh, in the way that they care for anybody, uh, everybody, uh, as they come in. And, and they, there's, there's no distinction at the door. If you're sick, you're sick, and, and we will take care of you. And, and they're doing it at great cost to themselves. And, and uh, uh, the researchers, the same way, the, the amount of time they're having to spend doing it, it's, it's incredible, the story that's being written in the, in the blood, sweat, and tears of those in the medical community, our first responders, and all of those who are, who are helping them in this age, including those restaurants and hotels that are providing all sorts of special services to facilitate the work that they are doing. That said, too, uh, another aspect, another dynamic of all of that are the number of folks who have found out that they can, in fact, work from home and do so efficiently and have a family at the same time. Now, isn't that a cool notion? I, I am not so sure that God hasn't slowed us down. He didn't, God, God did not give us COVID-19 so that we would learn a lesson. I think COVID-19 is in itself a reminder that we are weak and frail. God says, and let me show you how we can do some new things in the midst of that. That's the God who is always at work leading the people through the wilderness and bringing them to the promised land. That's the God I believe in in Jesus Christ. So this day, uh, reading Psalm 151 and taking the long rabbit trail uh, uh, around and talking about it, I, I guess um, I'm wanting you to think about where we are, where you are, uh, to pray, be prayerful about that. And uh, uh, what new things is God inviting you to consider uh, where you are uh, in how you have a relationship with God and uh, and what does that relationship call you to do? Not just to to look at God as the, as the great provider of services like you're going out to some department store. Oh God, if I pray it, or if two or three of us pray it, you know, it's just like a coin machine, it'll all come down. No, no. What's, what, is, what is this covenant relationship thing like in your life? And what does it mean about you? What does it mean about how you're going to respond to God? David was called to be king. It required a lot of him. It didn't mean that he did it perfectly. No, none of us are perfect. But in the midst of the imperfection, what did he find out about himself? And at what cost was he the king? And at what cost did he uh, have some of those imperfections along the way? There's a lot of story there, and I'd encourage you to read the biblical narrative about some of that as well. But for today, in the midst of... COVID-19 on April 15. Gosh, this is tax day. I didn't think about that. Oh, thank goodness the government has given us a little more time to get all of that done. Um, but um, in the midst of all of this, and in the midst of the despair of not being who we used to be, in the midst of normal not being what normal used to be, 
What is going to be the new way that we are community together, that we are family together, that we are faithful together? And how can we find ways to be unified in service beyond the effects of COVID-19 that shows we've learned something in these days and not just an endure, not just endured an event. It's something to think about, something to ponder along the way on this beautiful April 15th here in Southern Illinois. Yes, we are below I-80, so we're in Southern Illinois. And I say that very cynically, but gosh, we are. Uh, something to think about. May God's love and grace and peace go with you. And uh, may the word that is still being revealed, you know, uh, don't, put a, don't put a period where God has placed a comma, Gracie Ellen said. And, and I think there's a lot of truth in that. Uh, God is still speaking, and you're a part of God's voice. You, just where you are. And what is God saying in you? God's blessings, my friend. You are loved, be loved, and uh, know that God is always with you.